Are you stuck? What about unhappy? Join Elena Chapman, author, mentor, and life coach for 30-minute moments as she challenges you to get out of the doldrum and start living your life to the fullest. It's time to celebrate that life with 30-minute moments. Hi, this is Elena Chapman, and you are now listening to 30-Minute Moments. And I have a very great treat for you today. People were asking, who is Elena? And I know I just seem to pop on here. I mean, I, I know I'm a two-time international best-selling author, a mentor, and a speaker, all that cool stuff. But they really want to know who I am. So, the producer here at WoWo, Kayla Blakesley, is going to actually interview me. We're going to change roles. It's going to be kind of fun. I don't know. I'm used to being the one out in charge. I don't know. <laughs> what are you going to ask? <laughs> I think we've got to start first and foremost. Exactly what it is that you do. Well, basically what I do is I help people get where they don't want to be out of it and into where they really deserve to be. And even more than that, you know, we stay in our place of wherever we're not happy, which, by the way, is one of the main reasons why people start getting autoimmune diseases and things. I've seen it happen. If you are not happy in your workplace and you're going to it every day or you're not happy in your relationship and you're having to endure it, you know, it goes into your body. It starts forming. You start releasing different kinds of chemicals from your brain that affect your cells and you start getting sick. It makes sense. It just so totally makes sense. So I help people get out of that. But but what keeps us in are these critical thoughts, these these things that obligation. This is what has to be. It is as it is. And and this is what my dad did. This is what I do. This is what my mom said I need to do. This is where I need to be. And and we stay in it. But when you can learn what those critical thoughts are then you have a choice. And when you learn that they're not real, that you are putting the emphasis on it, there's a whole nother side of us. I help people tap into that other side. Um, Myla Angelou said, it is a side that you never let anyone trod on. You protect this side. And what is this side? It's the side that shows it's our true inner divine self. Some people call it the soul. Other people call it um, energy. Some people just like to call it the inner self. But it's everything. And it is in connection with something so much bigger than us. But it has all our compassion. It has our love. It has our hopes. It has our dreams. It has our true personality, why we came here. It is a part of us that sat on that cloud before we were born and said, I can't wait to get down there and squish my feet in the grass. I can't wait to feel that. And I wish people could see you when you talk about this because it's true. It's genuine. You are so transparent. I mean, this is real. You've truly dedicated your life to helping others. Oh, yes. It's very real, very genuine. I just I wish people could see you because it's so, (laughs) so real. But let's back it up a little bit. How did you arrive at this kind of shift and turning point in your life? Oh, gosh. Well, okay, I always say about 18, I I always, believe it or not, I was really happy most of my life. Um, You know, my life wasn't always wonderful, but it wasn't bad. I had a very supportive dad. And, and, you know, and I was a little girl at three who said, okay, I, I told the puppies I was surrounded with, we're on our own now, and I became independent. But... At 18, I couldn't figure out what was wrong with everybody else or what was wrong. Why was I so happy, knew where I wanted to go and knew who I wanted to be? And everybody else was giving me a lot of, why do you think you can do that? What was wrong here? So I I started studying all Wayne Dyer's stuff. And I really went for my career. And it was in music, actually. I was in music. I um, got two bachelor degrees. I got a master's degree. I started singing. Um, but then um, I was on that whole route, and my dad, who I really respected and loved, wanted me to get married because he thought music wasn't lucrative. Well, I shouldn't have gotten married. So you did get married then? I did. Okay. And, and I married a, someone who was appropriate. 
And what happened was um, I, I have three beautiful, wonderful boys that I love. But the thing was, um, I wasn't supposed to work. I was getting my doctorate then. I was working all over the place. I was fell in love with conducting even more than singing. And um, I loved early music and women's choirs. And um, But they just didn't want, uh, it took a lot of time. And so I slowly gave up the friends. I slowly gave up all the beautiful work. I was very, very conscious. I loved what I did. I was on cloud 157 every day. <laughs> I need some of that. <laughs> but, but it was gone. And, and it was really hard. And it was guilt. Guilt. You want to know why I did everything? Guilt. Uh, my husband at that time would hold up my first son and say, can you, how can you leave this little boy to go to get your course, get your doctorate? And it would just tear at my heart. And so I started giving up this and that. Pretty soon I had nothing. And it sent me into an identity crisis. I mean, because I had always had something. And, and it was just a very weird time. But then, all right, fast forward a little bit. When I decided to be happy again, I wanted my happy life back. Um, I made a decision. I sat on the side of the road. And I looked up at the, the sky and I thought, my gosh, what happened to being grateful? What happened to being happy? And, and I told the universe, I looked up at the sky. I said, hey, God, I want to be happy. I want it back. And that's what started when I talked to other people in the interviews. That's what started the snowball of effects. I see the book that says, have a happy life. I see mentors coming into my life. Things were happening so weird. Now, granted, my marriage didn't last because he wasn't happy and me really happy. Guess what? That's oil and vinegar. It didn't work. Which is sad. It is sad. Mm -hmm. And I don't talk about this. Why can I teach what I do? Because that doesn't sound bad enough. I understand. But when I decided to get divorced, it was a very hard divorce. It was a five and a half year divorce with... Um, a lawyer that I still, on his side, that I still don't like. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention you have three young boys. And the I whole had process. three, three yeah. young boys. But then on top of that, on the other side, um, at the same time, and I don't say it's related to div the divorce, but I do say it happened. I was bullied like you would not believe. During the divorce? Yes. Throughout it? Yeah. No kid. Why? For I don't who? know. Yeah. I don't know. And and I never could prove who it was, but I mean, it was really severe. It was on every front. And there were days that there were three or four things happening at once. And really, and some of it was so weird. Sit down and have coffee with me and I'll tell you some of the wildest stories you would never <laughs> believe in a hundred years. And and at first I was angry. I was learning all this stuff. You know, I was learning all the tools to be happy. But of course I was angry. Why was somebody attacking me? But as it went on, I found that what was happening, there, there's this whole world out there that people don't understand. There is a world out there that preys on, on negative, that preys on, on using others, that preys on me first, that preys on creating suffering for others for their benefit, even if it's only a tiny bit. It is a very awful world. And you can get wrapped up in that. You can get pulled down into it. And when you do, it alters your sense of reality. And it would take my mind off the divorce. If I had allowed myself, which I saw all this stuff happening, it was like, what was the new day going to bring? If I got wrapped up in that, it was, it was an altered sense of reality. And I would have ended up bitter, a victim, paranoid, and I wouldn't have been good to, for my kids or anything else. So I had to make a decision. It sounds like it was just a big old whopping attitude change. It's like you gave yourself almost an attitude adjustment, and it seems like that seemed to just it did. click and open all the doors for you immediately. It did. I just decided right then and there I wasn't going to let that happen. That's some powerful stuff, Elena, that you can just, <laughs> you know. It's called survival. <laughs> we have that. We can do that. And you are listening to this riveting story of mine <laughs> on 30-Minute Moments. Come on back, because I've got more. And it's also brighter. <laughs> this is Elena Chapman. 
You're listening to 30 Minute Moments with Elena Chapman, helping you discover your true purpose on WoWo and at WoWo.com. You are back listening to 30 Minute Moments, and I'm Elena Chapman. And we are here, well, I am here getting interviewed by my producer, producer Kayla Blakesley. And we are talking about, you know, when we are in that situation, when we're in a situation that is just not good. But I always say every moment is a gift. And so uh, in my own life, when I was faced with a situation that was very dire, I made a choice. I took power back. Well, it was actually a friend that woke me up. If you listen, if you listen to the signs, the universe, God is always there. You are never alone. I keep saying that. And if you just listen, and it took a friend saying, Elena, take care of your own circle. And All of a sudden, that was my aha. And I thought, you're right. I don't have to let everyone make me a victim. I don't have to do this. I'm going to sit down with a piece of paper and write out, and I suggest this for people, write out what can I control. And what it did, it it brought my mind back to the divorce I was going through. (laughs) And my kids... My kids were nine, seven, and five, and they weren't doing so well in the divorce. They were all exhibiting really weird signs at school, like Stevie, I got a call from my best friend and said my oldest wasn't skipping down the, ro- the hallway like he always was, and a math teacher was not being nice of all the times. And then my second, second son, I have three boys, my second son was doing his homework, but then he would stuff it in the back of the desk or in the recycle bin. He wouldn't hand it, hand it in. And then my third son, who was five, was starting to get kind of aggressive. And so I could take care of that. I didn't have to blame it on my soon-to-be ex. I was going to take care of that. So I contacted the teachers and I said, hey, our family's going through a hard time right now. I want to work with you. We got to get my boys back into a really good, secure environment. And I did things. I I held family meetings with my boys and I said, you guys, we are a unity. And what happens to you is really important. I want you to have just as much opinion in this because your world has been torn apart. It formed a whole new um, sense of family. I um, then could, decided to start forgiving during the divorce. Which had to be extremely difficult. What it would you was. recommend? Because I can't imagine doing that in the midst of a five you and know, a half year divorce. It was. I, I thought to myself, you know, it is what it is. And, and it's everybody's hurt. It really took um, that obs- observation of self. Vernon Howard's exercise that I teach. It took me going into meditation and figuring out what, what caused the divorce, going back, going back without any emotion. You know, he did this because of this. I did this because of this. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. And, and, and this was what was going to happen no matter what anyway. When you see that and you see that everyone is a victim of the circumstance that you did or that you did together, then you can start to forgive. And I forgave many times during that divorce. And what it, what it allowed me to do is not to have so much anger at the people, which really benefited at the end of the divorce. I also say, um, I used to always say, my one goal in this divorce is the betterment of all. The betterment of all. And I kept that in my sight. No matter what happened, I wanted the betterment for all. And really, a very cool story I'll share if we have time. Um, it was at the, towards the end of the divorce after, it really, uh, we were just fighting for uh, child support, and it had gone to the Supreme Court of Indiana. And I was, I was doing this weird thing, Kayla. <laughs> you know, it, well, whatever is happening inside you manifests in weird ways. And I felt finished but not finished. So, like, I would start projects and not finish it. It got so bad, I'd, like, do half the dishes, and then I would leave with something else on my mind. It was so weird. 
And I remember that's when I thought, I need, I, you know, I'm doing well. I'm teaching this stuff. What's going on? I was teaching through right relations at that time in the court system, um, teaching others how to make a happy life, even during my divorce. But yet here I was starting to manifest this weird thing. And um, it was Bob Proctor, who's my mentor now. He said, you need to come. And I said, I certainly do. And I hopped on a plane and went to Toronto as fast as I could. And when I met him, oh, there's so many lessons. I love to teach people. But when I'm, I really wanted to meet him. And I sat down. And I said, Bob, I'm doing this weird thing. And I told him. And he asked me what was going on. And he said, let it all go. Let it go. We don't let stuff go. Mm -hmm. And that's when we get the manifestations in our behaviors, in the way we talk, in what we achieve. We weigh, it weighs us down. And I said, how can I let it go? Let it go. Are you crazy? And he said it again. And I, I repeated. I said, let it go. And at that moment, 50 freaking pounds lifted off my shoulder. 50 pounds. I felt it just go off. And it was so amazing. Everybody has to experience that. And that kind of brings me a perfect segue to my next question, which is ultimately the why, Elena. Because, you, again, you kind of go through this this life change for you. Kind of you went through this gray period. You describe it as a little bit of an identity crisis. And you come out of it with this almost in a big ball of happiness. But really what truly inspired you to just then share that with everyone surrounding you and touch everyone with this happiness? Truly the why. Because it worked. Because it worked. And... Why, in the name of heaven, could I sit here on my little ivory tower being happy and living my life and not help others realize that? And once and allow people to live what I really think is mediocrity. I've heard you in a couple of your other interviews with some of the guests that you have on, which people can go listen to them on your oh, podcast yeah. right now they if they should. want to. They should. They can do that. Fantastic guests. But what I find interesting that you've kind of been repeating in episodes is that you didn't want to rob people of what you kind of the self-discovery that you did have. You were just mentioning it earlier today, in fact. Right. So it's almost like you had to share it because otherwise you're going to be robbing people of experiencing the right. same thing that you got to experience. Oh my gosh. And I think that's remarkably profound of you to seize that opportunity and then share it because there's well, a lot of us you. out there who, you know, maybe we do go through these transformative moments in our lives, but then that's it. Where you kind of took it to a whole new <laughs> level, you know? Well, well, when you transform, when you really get that, it's magical. And when you see how life really, well, when you know that you're not alone, that you're, you're part of something so much bigger if you allow yourself to be, and that you truly are co-creating, and you're never alone, how can you not share that? How can you not allow other people to open up to that? Well, sit tight, Elena, because I think we need to tell some of our listeners a little bit about your, I'm going to call it your resume, some oh of your boy. books, some of the other stuff you got going on, because yeah. I think everyone needs to hear about it. This is 30 Minute Moments, and I'm Elena Chapman, and I'm also the guest. So come back soon. This is 30 Minute Moments with Elena Chapman, helping you find your inner self every Sunday on WoWo and at WoWo.com. You are listening to 30 Minute Moments, and I'm Elena Chapman, and I am being in interviewed by Kayla Blakesley. Are you originally from Fort Wayne? Are you originally a Hoosier no, or where are you from? I am not a Hoosier. <laughs> You're a transplant Hoosier. I'm a transplant Hoosier. I actually grew up from the age of five in Vermont. Okay. I'm a little Vermonter actually that's out in the Midwest. Isn't that interesting? And then the marriage brought you here then? The marriage. Okay. I went to graduate school at IU. <laughs> so let's kind of fast forward now. I mean, you kind of went through this identity crisis. You oh, kind yeah. of flipped a switch and you had this big aha shift moment in, did. in your life, which I you did. ask all of your guests when they've had those. So it's great to hear yours. You've been touching lots of lives, sharing your happiness. What are some tools in your toolbox that you have that you can provide to other people? Because I know your website is just loaded with content. I know you've, you've written books. You speak at events. You have yes. some coaching. Can you talk yes, to me about yes. all of those tools that you have? Oh, my gosh. Yes, yes. We do. I do have a lot. You know, I do have meditations. You know, they're all guided because when your mind is, you know, just so busy, it's hard to stay quiet. <laughs> so these take you on journeys that help you. It's like living a story in your meditation, which is really cool. Some of them even help you forgive. I have a wonderful book. Um, uh, you know, I've got my books on there. I've got a wonderful becoming rope. 
Now, what is that? That is so cool. Say, what is that? Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> the becoming rope is this. Um, people love this rope. It has the mantra on it. You would like this, Kayla. It says, "Surrender the how, conquer the fear, have faith in the future." And I love all those things. I know. Who doesn't? <laughs> so you read that. It's on a little heart. It's a gold rope that people keep this in their purse. People have kept it for, I mean, I can't believe They love this. And it does help. Some people put it at the edge of their bed. And you put it in a circle. And then you stand on the outside of that circle. You say the mantra. Okay. Surrender the how. Conquer the fear. And then you take a deep breath. You think about the person you want to be before you go into that meeting or before you start your day or before whatever. You think of that confidence. You think of that person who feels good. And then you take a step in and become. That's the becoming rope. I don't know. I have books. I have courses. I have the Break Free, which guides yourself. Well, your books are no joke here. I mean, you're an oh, yeah. international <laughs> best-selling author here. Times two. two so, times, so your yeah. books are some some serious good reading here. They are. I love the Prison Effect. Uh, the Prison Effect gives you some really cool tools. It's all set up. The books are. Jack Canfield and Bob Proctor love the books, and so does Peggy McCall. They because. I give real content. I really give you, I use my story. That doesn't mean you have to be going through a divorce to, to gain these tools, but I have to use what I know. And when you get to the end of the chapter, I have in that book a time to focus, which gives you exercises so that you can relate back at the chapter and apply what I've said into your life. So that's why people like the book. And I hear you keep saying, you know, you talk a little bit about your story and I, and I have to just say, to me, yes, it might not be some horrific tragedy or anything right. like that, but when I do hear you speak, it's such an identifiable tragedy because you talk guilt and you talk about forgiveness. And yes. I think we can all identify oh, gosh, with those yes. feelings. How do we process them? How do we deal with them? So yes. by the sounds, some of these tools would be excellent to have to conquer some of those issues. You know, there are. And I, the one tool that I love, because I've seen it work miracles for a start, do I have time to give it? Yes, you do. Okay. You know, everyone out there in Wowo land, <laughs> I have this gratitude. Now, I know I'm going to say gratitude. Oh, here she goes. But this is different. This, this is a gratitude exercise that really does it. And if you have a piece of paper, write out, um, I am so happy and grateful now that. In fact, go get a special notebook. You should do this in the morning at night. And when you have a notebook you love, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to be your little sanctuary. And when you open it up, you write, okay, I, uh, now that I am happy and grateful, you know, then you write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you are going to name ten things that you are very grateful for. Every day? Every morning and night. Every morning. Oh, so I'm doing 20 a day? You're doing 20. <laughs> but the thing is, if you feel it. Like when I talk about my big red dog, you know, I'm feeling him licking my face or stealing the thing I just cooked off the, the counter. And it just makes me laugh, you know, and, and I feel good. So by the time you get to 10, you're in this awesome vibration. It does two things. It puts you in a vibration. And the other thing that it does, you're taking the very best part of your life to move forward with or to go to bed with. It's powerful. But then when you're in that really high vibration, then you just say, okay, God, the universe, I am ready to receive any message. And you close your eyes and you just let your mind empty. And a lot of times I'll hear a word. I'm listening to that divine part of me. You know, sometimes it's patience. A lot of times it's patience. <laughs> That's my story. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, and then after that, and this is the hard part, and then... You send loving light to three people or situations that are bothering you. And you do that two times a day, and then during the day you notice three things that you just think are amazing and beautiful. You're starting to change your perception. You're starting to invite goodness into your life. You are raising your vibration and you're changing the way you look at life. It's well, powerful. And I think it goes back to that, just kind of having that mindset, that attitude, like you said, that perspective where you kind of spend your morning doing that, you might not get so upset about the guy who cuts you off in traffic. It's amazing. I could see how that could really shift your perspective just for the day, it from does. morning to night. I mean, I'm going to have to definitely try it. If someone out wants to check out all these tools, maybe look at your books, learn a little bit more sure. about you. Can you say again where we can find you in terms yes. of online, social media, all these 
places. Oh my gosh, I'm all over the place. <laughs> you know, if you go to Facebook, I'm there. If you go Elena Chapman, if you go to YouTube, I'm all over there. Elena Chapman. Twitter, Elena underscore Chapman. I'm all over. But if you go to the website, it's Elena Chapman Life because it's all about life.com. And there you will find the blogs, the free gifts, the things you can read, the products, everything, and the courses. And yes, I do one on ones too. And throughout so. the year, you do a lot of things too. I know, for example, right now you have your Savvy Sisterhood going oh, gosh, on. You I have a lot that. of different things that you do throughout the yes. year too. Savvy Sisterhood is fantastic. Savvy Sisterhood is a free program program that I'm doing on Facebook right now. You hear now. that? It's a free. I'm free. free. Yeah. I'm trying to call in all those savvy women who want to keep growing, who want, but want friendship, community. They want to have other women. I hear so many times from people that, that women what bite back or whatever it is or women are mean they can be bottom line they can be mean for me they have always been the strength they have always been there when i need them so i want to bring that forward it's a perception i'm bringing and and i'm making it happen and that's going on right now that's going on how can i join that if i want to join if you go to elenachapmanlife.com you'll see join elena and click on that but you can also just type in on facebook join savvysisterhood.com and it takes you right to the Facebook page you can join. So is this only for women? What about our men out there who are maybe, oh, you know... Oh, I'm coming. I, I'm, this is what I'm starting first. Okay, I'm trying to get this going. And yes, I do have to. You know, it's funny. You can't just raise the consciousness of one group because then the poor men don't know what happened. You got all these savvy women out there and the men are like, what happened to me? You know, where, where did it all go? So yes, we're going to start very soon. I just have to do so much at one time. (laughs) Lena, it's been a pleasure. I'm so thankful that you let me come on and take part in what you're doing here. I I love love your show. I'm a big believer, a big fan of it. Thank you. And again, you can catch him on Wobo.com. You can catch him on Audioboom. Pretty much anywhere you can download a podcast, you will find 30 Minute Moments. Yes. And it's a fabulous show. And I thank you for the opportunity for me to be even be here to bring this to people and everyone out there i hope you've enjoyed this interview and getting to know me a little bit better and what i do next week we will be having another guest who brings you the ease into your life so that you can start celebrating the fun so don't miss out this is 30 minute moments and i'm elena chapman this has been 30 minute moments featuring elena chapman if you missed an episode Download it now at woo.com. Podcasts by Federated Media.